Okay. So if you're joining in, make sure you mention where you're from. I love to hear that. Um, I had a request for painting crystals, so I have chosen a reference. Now, before I actually start drawing and painting and all of that stuff, I want to talk about how I um, arrived at this particular image. <clears throat> and I think one of the best ways for me to show this is just to actually hold up my phone here and um, show the different things that I tried in order to get a reference picture. Okay, so this was my very first um, shot, okay? I had taken it basically in the same place as this. Um, but I didn't zoom in with my camera and I found that the, um, the perspective was a little bit exaggerated for what I wanted. So, um, I also found that maybe the background was a little bit distracting. Now, if you're using a 35 millimeter for your, uh, reference image, you have the ability of putting that background out of focus, which I would suggest, um, you know, to make your, your main subject, um, more focal, <clears throat> literally. Um, okay, so what I did was I pulled the camera back away from the crystal and I used my fingers to zoom in. And so now you see the same image, but with less distortion. All right, so I am aiming directly at a, uh, this is a patio door, so it's, um, it, it's looking outside, so the light is behind my subject. All right, so what if I um, took the took it from another angle? Oops, hang on, just a second. All right, so if I took it from another angle and put a dark background behind it, I get a completely different um, thing, right? So I get a, a really different uh, viewpoint and a entirely different lighting. Look how look how dark this one is on the on the sides versus this one, which is very light on the sides. So um, with a dark background in this case and the light coming in from the side, I get a completely different scenario. All right. So again, I zoomed away. I uh, or I I pulled away, pulled my camera a little further away or my phone, and then I zoomed in with my camera only. Now you can tell by by this and this the ellipses at the top and bottom, how exaggerated they are there and how, you know, this now becomes a lot less. So I've zoomed in a little bit with my, uh, with my fingers. <clears throat> okay, so now what would a white background look like? And a white ba background with the lighting coming from the side, it's okay, but there's no really great darks for, um, for that high contrast, for that full value range. So, I decided this one was not the most interesting um, image for me to work from. All right, so I I went back to this and uh, let me see here. Okay, then I then I took a video, and as I move the camera down at, at different angles here, you can see. Watch how the light changes within the crystal itself, and you can see the this this dark line here and how it. Um, kind of gets and cuts cuts off. Let, let's play that one more time. So this is starting at the top, so a different viewpoint. And then as it comes down, watch what's happening in this area here. Okay, look, look how that changes. And as soon as those highlights get into the highlight area above, you don't see them as much but you do see all this great contrast here. So what I did was I basically took the last view of this video, did a screenshot and ended up with this image here. So, um, so when you're doing your reference pictures, um, give it some thought. Uh, a lot of people will just, you know, plunk a, a piece of crystal or glass or something on a table not consider the light source, not consider the background. Um, there's, there's a lot of considerations when you're making a reference picture. 
Now, when I'm working from um, a reference picture or when I'm painting crystal or glass, I will work from a reference picture as opposed to working from life, mainly because you can see by this video, every little single shift is altering all the patterning and the lighting and everything else. Look how that all changes, you know, with just the slightest change. Now, if I if I lean left or right, I would get the same sort of thing, right? So it's, it's important to make sure that you kind of lock in where your highlights and shadows are going to go uh, to make your life a little simpler. <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's get to the drawing part of this. Um, I'm working on some Arches 140 pound cold press paper. I'm just going to use a standard pencil here for this and um, I have my uh, mainly Da Vinci watercolors but um, there's some Winsor Newton in here, some uh, Core uh, which is by Golden. There's um, I think there's a, even a Daniel Smith in here as well but um, we have lots of um, lots of variety in here that I could choose from. Although mainly this is a mostly colorless uh, image, I could inject some color into it. I don't have to follow the colors that, that are there. I could certainly add some more. Um, so I'm going to set this aside. I'll get to brushes when it's time for painting, but uh, let's get to this um, just before I do. Good morning, Catherine. Uh, Oh, okay. That's no problem. I guess I do save my uh, my live um, videos for for uh, for you to watch later if you have to. Um, good morning, Dorothy. Um, <clears throat> All right. So the first thing I want to do is determine the the middle. So I'm just going to take my pencil and make a straight line. And because my uh, crystal here in this particular case is straight on. Um, now I do still have a fair bit of a little bit of exaggerated um, perspective here but um, I don't mind that uh, in this case so I'm looking where here's the top okay I'm looking I'm pointing my pencil at the image here so the top of my uh, crystal is here and the bottom is here so I want to find the midpoint about halfway and I can see where it lands on my crystal. So if my halfway point is about here, then I know the bottom of the, the part that holds the wine, the top, is, is going to be slightly below that, just slightly. Okay, so I'll put a straight line there. I'll put a line at the top and bottom of where I want to have my... Uh, <clears throat> Pardon me, where I want to have my um, wine glass fit into my into my um, my work area here, my paper. <clears throat> All right. So now I want to look to see how far is the top of the opening of the glass and the far side of the opening of the glass. So basically, I've got an an ellipse. So I want to see how far from here to here. I want to make it and uh, looks to be, I'm eyeballing this, but I would say about there, maybe a little less, maybe a little less than that. <clears throat> All right. So um, now the width, the width of my, I don't know, I've got a, the cup part, I'll call it the cup part. Um, the width of the cup is approximately there. Now it has to be the same distance on both sides, so I will measure that. It's got to come over a little bit more. All right. So I know that that is that is the width of the top of my vase. Now I know that I need to make an ellipse fit into that 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 area. So I'm going to do a real sharp turn because I don't have a lot of space to work in right there. All right, so I've got to go pretty tight with this. All right, so I have the ellipse. Um, 
think it could be a little bit bigger. I made it shorter, but now I'm thinking it should probably be a little bit bigger. So, <clears throat> all right, so I've got that. I've got the bottom of this. Now, as I said, this was a, this was a request to do crystal today. So, uh, I hope, hope you're watching. If you made the request, I forget who that was. Um, there we go. Okay, so I'm trying to get the angles right here. Um, now, this is interesting because at the camera eye level, now I'm saying camera eye level because I'm obviously standing above this. I'm just holding the camera low. But at the camera's eye level or at the level of the lens, look at this line here. Shouldn't that be round? Not if it's at eye level. So in this case, uh, we're looking at a straight line. Uh, you know, right here, right in the middle of the vase or the cup. All right, so for the bottom, let's get this circle, this ellipse. And I'm going to make this. And is it as wide as the top? It looks to be. It looks to be just about as wide. So I'm going to. work within the the height and width of that space to make my ellipse. Now, when you're drawing perspective, these are things you need to look at. Like how how much distance is there between the top of that circle or ellipse, the oval shape and the bottom of it versus the width. Uh, a lot of people will make this opening much too round. I mean, you know it's a round opening, right? Obviously, it's a round opening. But when you um, when you put it in perspective, that really changes how that looks. All right. So now the the middle of this. Let's see that that bump in the middle of the stem is about halfway, I would say. So I'm going to put line right here. And this is quite rounded. Good morning, Melody. Hi, Diana. Evelyn. Thank you for joining. It's not quite as wide as uh, the crystal here. So I wanted to show the drawing process. I know some people think, oh, you trace your stuff. And I don't always do that. I definitely encourage drawing. I think once you draw something, you have a much better understanding of it. Um, occasionally, I will um, I will trace. Uh, yes, you can call the cops on me. I will trace, but um, usually that's if if I've got something that's really complex that I can't work out. All right, so the bottom of this stem does not stop, like doesn't go exactly to the, to the middle of this oval. It's a little bit higher because we're actually seeing more of the front of the uh, base than we are the back. All right, so. Uh, okay, so there's, there's a little, ellipse in here. See, it goes a little wider than that. And then there's these strong shapes that come down here. There's this really light shape right there, followed by another light shape. This is a pinwheel crystal, which admittedly <laughs> I don't use very much. I probably should. All right, so there's a lot of lines here. Now, this center part, that's where things start getting really complex, right? 
Now, the temptation is to put it between here and here, but that's not the case. It actually, look at the very top of that pinwheel, actually um, interrupts this line, doesn't it? It kind of cuts across. So right across here, there's a part that goes right through there. So this starts about here. And really, I'm just looking at the larger shapes, and I'm, I'm, I am kind of counting how many there are. Just looking at the larger shapes for now. This one goes straight across. And there's one. So I'm kind of thinking of this like like a clock. Let me zoom in on this. You can see this a little better if I zoom in, I'm sure. So I'm thinking of this as a clock. Well, this one's kind of pointing at, you know, just maybe between 2 and 3 o'clock. This one's pointing at 4 o'clock. This one's pointing straight down towards 5 o'clock. Uh, this one's pointing towards seven. This one's pointing, you know, and so on. And so I'm looking at this in terms of a, a clock and the direction that a clock face hand would go. Okay, so I, this didn't line up quite as I wanted, so I've got to make adjustments. So I'm going to do that now before I get any paints out. I'm going to do all my adjusting probably has to be a little higher yeah because this this just a little below that point I'm looking at the point here and again it's just a little bit below so I'm not going to go too too low all right and then there's a really um, small star like design in the middle but I'm not going to think about that too much those are really smaller details. I can actually do that with my brush. I've just got my main basic stuff in here, and I think I can work from this. There's a couple little interruptions of the um, the the dark areas in here. Um, now I'm going to just work on this oval a little bit, just to, or this ellipse, to just get this a little bit more convincing. So I'm making all these adjustments before I commit to, uh, to it with paint. All right, there's some real dark areas right along here. There's kind of a line there dark area here and I'm constantly looking at my reference to see where these darks are. Um, there's kind of another reflected ellipse there. Now one thing that's going to be important is to show a little bit of my background because there's reasons why there's highlights and shadows all within here and your background has everything to do with it, as I showed earlier in my uh, reference images. So by having, by having this contrasting background where you've got sort of darker area against lighter area, that's helping to set up those uh, strong contrasts within my crystal. All right, so we're getting there. Now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Get rid of some of the lines I don't need. I'm going to do this very gently with this eraser because I don't want to um, abrase my surface here at all. I want to keep this uh, paper nice and good shape for receiving paint and water. And so I want to be very gentle when I'm erasing. Uh, I'm using, this is a Stadler, um, uh, I think this is nylon eraser. But uh, those pink ones, or uh, you have to be careful of those pink ones. They leave a stain sometimes. Uh, another one that I really like, I especially like using a kneaded eraser on my watercolor paper because it's a lot gentler. Um, I could take 
and warm it up a little bit in my hands and I could erase a few small things you know if I need to now that wasn't something I needed to erase there but uh, just to show <clears throat> all right so do I need to do I need to uh, draw all these details in I am going to choose not to because I find that if I draw so many details I end up being confused and if they're that complex there's a lot of fudging I can do <laughs> so all right so let's start painting <clears throat> we're gonna make this a fairly fairly quick demo today I think so I'm going to be using this is a soft squirrel hair brush ha holds a lot has a really nice point to it so that'll allow me to get sort of really nice uh, shapes in some areas now I could I have choices right now I'm looking at this reference image right here and I'm trying to determine whether or not I need to use masking fluid I could I could use masking fluid and then I could put some really nice smooth washes in there and everything else uh, but the reason I'm using a squirrel hair, a natural hair brush, is um, because I can fill it up, start painting, and keep it going. And as long as I can keep it going, I will have a reasonably smooth wash for what I need. Now I'm going to be skipping around a lot of pattern there. Um, if I lose any of my details, I would be able to... Um, come back in with some white paint afterwards if I need to. Um, usually I will try to use masking fluid, but just for the sake of making this a faster demo, I'm going to do it just without and possibly add some uh, masking fluid afterwards. Or not masking fluid, white paint. Not using masking fluid. All right, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to begin with some Hmm, what can I start with? I think I'm going to start with some, I'm going to use some neutral tint here. All right, so I'm going to thin it. Let me get this on screen here. Oh, I've got some other stuff on this, in this portion. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to mix my neutral tint. Uh, I think this is Winter Newton neutral tint. Um, can't remember. Uh, and I'm just going to jump right in. Let's go a little thinner, a little thinner than this. What I'm seeing is that this part of the glass, because we're looking through two thicknesses, is darker than this part at the top. All right, so I will be working around my whites. So here we go. Ooh, that's probably a little darker than I want, so I'm going to just quickly get in there with some water and I can spread out that color so that it doesn't end up being too dark. Now you've got to remember of course that um, paint or the watercolor always dries lighter so there's some areas here that are going to be dark so I'm going to go right into my pattern there with this with this color. And right across half, because each one of these pinwheels is half dark, half light. Anyway, each one of them. All right, so then there's there's little bits of like little slivers of the um, patterning showing through there, so I'm adding that in and half of this. And I'm looking for all these lights. Now you might be looking at this and going, "Oh man, that's that's way too complicated for me." Uh, one thing you might find helpful is to take a pencil and pencil in where these, very lightly of course, but pencil in where these areas are. 
but essentially that's what I'm doing with paint. So I'm going really light color here. Is there any lights on this side? Not really. It's pretty much all just a smooth wash here, so I'm just going to come in with this until I get to this, this light area down here. Oh, and then there's some complex stuff in here. Okay, so when you get to the complex stuff, that's where I can just kind of hint at stuff. I'm not going to uh, agonize over every little bit. I could. I, I absolutely could. Looking here. Okay, so what about that middle? I'm going to grab some more color here. This middle has this uh, very light pattern in here, and I'm basically just going to hint at this. So it kind of connects all of these with little bit of a design here. Uh, but it's something like that. But I'm actually seeing kind of a double image because I'm actually seeing the one on the other side of the glass as well. So that creates a lot of distortion, which is actually going to help me because then I don't have to be too perfect about this. I can really just sort of hint at a lot of this. Uh, I know it's not perfect, but it's getting the idea across. All right, so that looks kind of dark right now because I'm the only thing you're seeing right now is the white paper. And so when you only see the white paper, it seems dark by comparison. Let's take this uh, right up along this top. I'm going to go a little darker maybe along here. And one continuous motion. <laughs> If I can, I'm at an awkward angle here. Normally I would turn my work around, but I'm going to try to get that reasonably, reasonably right. <clears throat> now I'm going to come in and start adding a few more of this. It's sort of light, my first value. The only thing I have to work, think about in this particular part here is the the light areas. That's the only thing I'm painting around. I'm not I'm going over all the dark areas. Don't have to worry too much about any of that. Um, okay, so there's a few little light bits in here. I'm just going to skip around them. I have to work around this this funny shape at the bottom. This is pretty smooth right through here. So I'm just going to come in and get that filled in. You see how far this brush can take paint? Like it just is going and going and going. It's not running out. So that's really what I want here. Is to be able to come right along here and paint without stopping. Now there's a little bit of, I can see a little bit of greenery. You can see in the in the reference here there's some plants and so there's a little bit of green that's happening in in this area here. I'll add that in afterwards I think. Um, this is the speedy way of painting crystal. There are multiple ways of doing it. I'm going to do it the most sort of immediate and um, I guess loose if you want to call it that loose way of painting this I'm 
All right, so this area in here, really bright, but there's some darks in here. So I'm just going to take my brush and indicate this shape. Something like that. I can approximate things. <laughs> it doesn't have to be exact. I can approximate things and totally pull this off. Um, it'll be it'll be just as convincing and if you don't show somebody your reference picture they will believe every bit of it. So coming across here with a few few varied lines there's going to be a real dark that goes down there. Boy oh boy. That one side is going to be really dark. I'll just put that in there just to sort of lock it in. Go over that with dark later but then there's sort of another section here. And for the most part, okay, this has got to go a little higher. This has got a little sliver in there. Um, coming down to this uh, sort of a, a kneecap, if you want to call it that, kneecap for the, for the stem, this sort of decorative bump in the middle. There's a gap in there, and all of this area gets filled in. Lower section. Okay, so we've got the darks on each side, which right now I don't have any dark paint. I'm not going to stop to switch to dark paint. I'm just going to paint it this color all the way through. So all of this is going to be kind of monotone, very one color um, type of thing. And then down in here we've got some a little bit of striping and some darks at the sides of this, you know, base where it connects to the to the uh, base. All right, so now this is, I'm going to thin this down a little bit more just because it's not quite dark, dark, and I'm just going to paint following the shape here. So I'm going to paint and leave some light areas within here. Nice kind of wet brush here. Keep my brush wet so that I can keep the paint flowing. And I'm just going to go in on this and leaving those, leaving some good strong light areas in there. And I kind of missed there. I'm just going to pull that off right away so I don't get a dark in there. And uh, yeah, there's so so there's a big area in here with with a reflection of that stem. So right below the stem I've got some of the stem reflecting in this glass. Now part of what's going to make the edge of this base appear is when I put a dark tabletop in there, a darker tabletop. Good morning, Verna. Hi, Anne. All right, so I'm looking at shapes. I'm looking at values, really looking at values. Values are going to be like so important in this. And I'm really following the uh, the drawing that I did in terms of keeping the perspective. All right. Now I'm going to put this tabletop in here. A little bit more color here. 
this is all just neutral tint right now and um, as long as this is dry and I can work up against it I'm okay and this ends right below the knee so I'm just going to put a straight line across there and as I paint this background I'm going around the shape So I'm not going to paint right to the edges of my paper. I don't think it's necessary, but I'm going to come in along here. And just imply the table. Now it has to match up to the other side. Right. And again, I want to get, I want to keep the edges of this nice and light. Get a little more color here. Oop, picked up a glob. There's a glob on the end of my un, undissolved color. Nope, that had a bit of green in it. That's okay. I don't mind. You can have a little green in it. Doesn't matter. As long as it's the correct value, it doesn't make, make one bit of difference. Okay, just let that go across. I'm going to do a little bit down below because if if I do a little bit below I can show a little bit of the shadow on the table as well. Oops, that started to dry. Ah! What have I got in there? Some green. That's what you get for not cleaning your palette. <laughs> Okay, so why do I want to show this? It's mainly because I want to show some of the dark reflection on the tabletop as well. Now the tabletop is not shiny like the glass, so it's not going to have sharp, hard shapes. It's going to have um, it's going to have a much softer shadow here. So I'm just picking up a little bit of this and working into this while it's wet. I'm going to come down and just imply the the reflection there. There is a little bit of dark that comes around the edges, right where the glass touches the table. Whenever things touch a surface, you're going to get a um, an extra dark shadow there where it makes contact. And in your painting, you'll do a very crisp, uh, strong line there to imply that. All right, so we've got sort of the a ghost version of our of our crystal. Uh, I've got some darks I'll put in here as well, but I'm going to wait for that because I if I meet this tabletop, then I'm going to be running into trouble because wet into wet, and it'll bleed. But I can come in now, and um, I'm, before I get too carried away with uh, details and all of that, I'm going to start taking some of that green. I'm going to take, um, let's take a little, I'm going to take a little areolin and cobalt blue, mix up a green, maybe a little more, a little more blue. It's not a, it's not summer anymore, so we don't have this nice yellowy green. Let me pull this down so you can see. That's a little bit on the bright side, but I'm putting it over top of something that's gray. So if I'm putting it over top of something that's gray, it's going to automatically dull down my color. So I don't want to go in with a dull green and end up with a, a gray green. <laughs> I just want to get a little bit of color in here. Oops. Wet paint. All right, so I'm going to come in with some of this in a few spots. I'm going to find a few little places where I can put a bit of this in here. And it lands in the most surprising places sometimes. That's the thing with crystal is it it uh, it has all these facets that um, reflect in, in different directions and so you get all these crazy places for colors where colors show up in 
things like that. So just little bits of green and you can see that it's it's much greener here, much, much brighter here than what I put on there. So, um, all right, not too much of this actually, just a little bit. There's not that much showing. A little bit in between these two bright spots, but uh, that's pretty good, I guess. All right, so now I'm going to come back into my neutral tint here. And I'm going to go a little bit stronger this time, just a little... I don't have to go a lot stronger because uh, if I'm putting it on top of something that's already painted, it's not going to be, it's already going to double how dark it is going to be. So if I use the same value and put it over top, it's going to be darker automatically because the first, unlike, unlike acrylics or oils, the layer underneath will show through because what I'm putting on is transparent. All right, so now I'm going to start trying to iron out where some of these darker areas are because the top of my crystal is pretty much dry other than the green areas. Let's see if I can get this a little darker. This is uh, actually got the rim on the other side actually shows a little bit dark as well. Now, it's very important not to make a complete oval here because the highlight interrupts that that um, pattern. And not all of these are going to be um, really dark. And I haven't gone really dark yet. I'm going to go to a really dark at the very, very last step. But I'm trying to be a little bit more cautious as to how I'm um, applying my color now. Will be a little more important. So I'm, I'm just looking at one shape at a time. What's that shape bringing me? Is it, you know, is it light, dark, medium? All right. This one's all dark. Now keep in mind that I'm doing the, you know, maybe a value seven um, on the value scale. I haven't got to my 10 yet, so I haven't got to my darks yet. So, All right, so there's quite a dark line that comes down here. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm a little hoarse today. All right, some darks that come down here. This comes down and actually kind of connects to that that light light section right there. I'm gonna get that in there. And a lot of dark, darker area in here. Let's see if I can get this line straightened out a little bit. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um Mm -hmm. 
I see a triangular shape right there. I'm working side by side with my um, image. Maybe I can zoom in and they'll be about the same size. So working side by side, I can see that there's a triangular shape there. There's little shapes within here, uh, but I'm not going to get too fussy or particular about these. Crystal's kind of like an abstract form. It's always it's always changing with every shift of your head. So in that sense, it can be very forgiving to paint. All right, next side. So I'm look I'm working from bigger shapes and then I'm breaking down the bigger shapes into smaller shapes. And as I'm breaking down these into smaller shapes, I'm able to bring in darker values at the same time. Okay. Hmm. Let's come down this side. I see some darks in here. And I'm just looking, what is that shape? I don't have to think about the color. I don't have to think about the value. I've only got one value in my brush at the moment. I'm just concentrating on what is that shape. There, like with crystal, you get a lot of hard edges. So one thing I'm not having to worry about is softening a lot of edges here. Um, there could be some of that, uh, you know, like down in, in this part maybe. There might be some edge softening, but not too much. Um, crystal, one of the reasons that I chose this is it really shows the sparkle of the crystal. So it, um, I don't have to have a lot of softened edges and that's not necessarily why I picked it. I picked it because visually it just has more impact. If you don't have sparkle in your reference picture it's not going to show up magically in your painting. So going back to what I started with earlier about the um, paying attention to your reference image, you want to um, make sure that you uh, get a good reference to start with. Okay, so there's Sort of some crisscross lines here. I'm not going to fuss too much. I could get really fussy and I can feel myself wanting to do that. But I'm just going to, I'm going to just get a little bit more liberal with this and get looser because I don't want to get bogged down with detail, right? Leave a few spots in there, uh, work around the, the main one and that will be fine. Okay, some darks in here, and yeah, so. All right, starting to shape up. Now I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna come down to some of these areas down at the, uh, in the stem, and I'm gonna add a few darks in here. Mid value, I should say, a value seven perhaps still have a way to go. Kind of missed the shape there. So I'm going to get this little dip that comes down. some of the darks that 
on the sides. Just I will be coming in with dark to do these, but just so I don't lose them, I'm going to. Now here's here's the reflection, and I'm I'm just indicating this with this is like a I'm not thinking oh this is the reflection I'm thinking wow that's a really strange shape at the base of that uh, the base of that wine glass and I'm just going to paint that really abstract shape that I'm looking at so I don't have to think oh that's got to look like this or this is has to look like that I'm just looking at the shape and painting the shape that I'm seeing All right, I can come in with a little bit, a little bit more color here. Get a nice shape to that base. That's kind of a crucial shape. And then, of course, there's the shadow below. Get really up on the tiptoe of my brush here so I can get a finer line. And uh, yeah, so it's starting to come. Now, let's just jump into a couple of darks. So we've got, um, I've got the white of the paper. I've got a light mid value. I've got a darker mid value and now I'm going to my darks. I could do this in multiple stages and definitely do lots and lots of values, uh, but I can get the same effect if I'm um, jumping into my darks here. Because with crystal, uh, you can definitely get a lot of high contrast, like real dark stuff, real full range of value dark stuff right beside light stuff which actually helps add the sparkle to your crystal so some of these extra darks so I'm just less diluted color is what I'm using here and uh, again I'm breaking up some of the smaller shapes that I made in the last um, value Good morning, Anne. Hi, KG and Loga. So, just coming in with some of these darks, really watching that shape. Another dark here. And the darks are really what make the crystal sing. Like you really see that sparkle happen once you add some of these darks. And with these shapes, I'm looking, okay, well, this gets a little, like the skinny part, I'm working on the skinny end, and boy, these shapes turn from really dark, or really skinny, to really fat, right? Because that shape has to get stretched out into that little corner. So, now, Let's get a few of these ones in here into the actual pinwheel. So 
love this stage of the, the painting where you can add those darks and really make this uh, crystal look shiny. Mm. Funny little bit just on the tip. So the, the thing with crystal, crystals are actually a great thing to practice with because it changes so much. You can't paint what you think should be there. You have to paint what you see. <laughs> you, you almost don't have the option because it's so, um, so clear, <laughs> like literally and figuratively. Uh, it's clear to see the lights and darks. Um, often people say to me, oh, your glass is so realistic and if you think of it in just in terms of values, it's really quite um, quite straightforward because you don't have, you, I shouldn't say you don't have, you don't always have these um, edges that you have to soften. Okay, you can see I'm slowing it down now and I'm paying attention not to get too crazy with these darks. I want to get them in there, but I don't want to lose the mid values that I put in entirely. this triangular shape that I did before. I'm going to reinforce that, make that a little darker. <clears throat> but by this time you can really see how important that reference picture would be. If I had gone with the earlier one with the white background, this one, there's hardly any darks in there. Um, you don't see the pattern on the on the crystal so well, and um, you know the base isn't too bad. I can actually see the base fairly well, but uh, yeah, this one would to me would not be as sparkling as this last one that I, I worked with. So whenever you are doing your crystal setup, keep all of those things in mind. The angle of the, the, the camera or the phone or whatever you're using, um, especially how close you are because if you're, you know, if you're, if you're photographing a small object, the closer you get, the more distorted it becomes. You know, have you ever, you ever seen a photo of somebody's dog and they're standing right over top of their dog and the nose is gigantic and the, <laughs> the body is really tiny? So you get that extreme distortion. So one thing that uh, you can avoid getting that distortion is by pulling the camera away and zooming in with uh, with your lens or your uh, or with your fingers if you're using a, a phone or an iPad or something like that. All right, so here's here's these shapes. I've got to be really quite specific in some of these areas here. So some real contrasting darks here, which I love.
Okay, so this comes down and comes right underneath, right into this little dip thing there. Comes down into there. And look that little shape there, like the, the little little bits and pieces. Sometimes they go across, they connect to the other side, and sometimes they don't. It all depends on your lighting and the type of crystal and all of that. Okay, so let's get back up into here and get some of these ones on the left side done. The base where it connects to the table. This is where I really want to get this shape good and dark and accurate as much as possible, as much as you can. So I'm actually going to shift my camera or my hand angle so that I can get a little bit more of a smooth line. It's an awkward angle for me to go like that. Okay, so I've got some pretty sparkly crystal there. And the only thing uh, that's really not making sense so far is that I don't have a background. So I'm gonna get, let's go to a bigger brush here because I'm basically just gonna fill some of this in. So I have, I'm, I'm not going to do all this detail. There's brick and, and all kinds of stuff in there, but I'm just gonna come across here with that dark, And then it gets a little warm, so I'm just going to grab some warmer color that I had in there on my palette. This was, oh, probably a combination of uh, raw sienna. Um, I think a little bit of um, burnt sienna as well. So not going to fuss too much with what's the right color. There's a lot of, still a lot of gray in here. So I want to make sure that this gets good and dark underneath here because that explains the contrast in the actual crystal. So I have seen students uh, take a, a picture of crystal from one reference and put it into their own setting. And when you do something like that, it doesn't always fit because you've got um, a lot of uh, differences between what's being reflected in the crystal. And uh, maybe consciously, maybe subconsciously, people do pick up on those things that, you know, something's, something's not right. You know, that just, it'll seem like, can't put my finger on it, just something doesn't fit right. And it's like when perspective's off, you know, not everybody can tell you exactly why the perspective's off, but they just know. You know, it's something we're familiar with. All right, so there's a little bit of light color above, and it's hardly got any color at all. But it does go through some of this crystal, so um, I'm going to have to make sure all of this is dry. Why don't I just give this a little speed dry?
Okay, I muted while I did that, but um, I actually wouldn't even need to make this line crisp like that. I, I could have done, I could have softened this when I was doing it, and maybe I will do that um, because this also needs to be darker. This is not exactly um, dark enough yet, so just going to take a little bit of light color. And okay, so there's kind of a band of trim on that house there. So I'm going to, my neutral tint's going to run, blot that quick. And I'm just going to fade that away. Clean some clean water and fade that off. So not much color at all, but it's a little bit. Some undissolved color. Some paint crumbs in there, which is messing me up a little bit. So you should really make sure you've stirred your paint well so that doesn't happen. All right, so some of this color is going to have to appear in my vase or in my uh, glass. Doesn't make sense that it's so gray behind, right? So I need to bring some of this in and I'm gonna go right through all the top of the crystal. I'm going to come into the grayed areas that I did before so that I have continuity. This is what I mean by, you know, if you take one reference and you plop it into another setting, that it it won't fit right. So this coloring, since it matches my background, is uh, connecting the background to my subject. I'm not making it very perfect here. It's not necessary, but that's wanting to bleed in there. All right. So now my background looks like it goes right through, but not through my highlights. I did paint around those. I'm just going to take a little more neutral tint and uh, darken up some of this a little bit. Go a little darker here and here. Now that could be a tabletop, that could be any number of things. Uh, I wanted the light behind so I kind of got a house. <laughs> but Now I'm just going to blot my brush. And if I run a blotted brush just lightly along the top, that will soften that upper edge. Why do I want to do it? Because I want all the crispness to be in my main subject. If I make the background a little bit blurry looking, it will look out of focus. Okay, so I think that just about wraps it up. I want to keep this uh, Keep this damp here. I'm going to use a synthetic brush for this. This uh, neutral tint is one that really um, reactivates easily. So I'm just going to keep my eye on this edge. I don't want it to end up being uh, a new hard edge. <laughs> so it's coming along here with my blotted brush. All right, so there is my uh, demo for this morning. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have any requests for other demos uh, for upcoming uh, YouTube Lives, then by all means, uh, Put it in the comment section uh, or, or in the chat. I'll, I will see either one. And um, 
I will, uh, oh, I'll probably, I could, I could fuss and play with this a little bit more. I could see down here, I could probably get a little darker in some of these spots. You know, just emphasize some of this a little bit more, that type of thing. I always find something else. <laughs> just when I say, oh, I think I'm just about done for today, I always find some other little thing. But, um, but yeah, this is the little stuff you can fuss with afterwards, but uh, the general idea of the crystal is there. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we will see you next week, same time, same channel. Thanks so much. See you later.